Hello, lovely people. It's Thursday, January 18th. Welcome to the best 10 minutes in news where I tell you the what, letting you decide what to think. Happy Friday Eve. I'm Coy Wire. This is CNN 10. We start today by heading to the mountain town of Davos in Switzerland. It's known for its ski resorts and the World Economic Forum, which is happening this week. It's an annual meeting of business, political, and academic leaders. More than 60 heads of state are meeting in Davos, including presidents of Ukraine and Israel, the U.S. Secretary of State and Anthony Blinken, and Prime Minister of China, Li Chung. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella and Sam Altman of OpenAI are attending as well, among many other business executives. So what's the goal of the World Economic Forum? Davos gives space for all of these powerful people from different countries and industries to meet in formal and informal ways to share ideas and brainstorm solutions to the world's biggest problems. What's on the agenda? Global conflict, including tensions between China and Taiwan, the wars in Ukraine and the Middle East. The world leaders are also expected to talk about climate catastrophes and pivotal elections happening this year in several major countries, including the U.S., India, and Mexico. Among other big topics are how artificial intelligence will impact jobs and the pandemic's impact on the world economy that's still in recovery. CNN's Richard Quest is in Davos, and he's found a pretty unusual way to explain the goals and ambitions of the event and the basics of the global economy. He's doing it through the sport of curling. Take a look. It is a scene of alpine beauty. The landscapes of winter at Davos. The peaks, the vistas, the snow. The World Economic Forum's theme this year, Rebuilding Trust, where it aims to hit the target. That's also the philosophy of the Davos Curling Club. So when the skip says, here, you make the curl like that. So that's why it's called curling, because you curl. It curls. curls. Curls, yes. Think of these stones as being the economy. Various governments, prime ministers, presidents, finance ministers, they set their course and send it on its way. So many factors threaten to sweep the economy of its power. For starters, interest rates. Central bankers have hiked them to the point where economies have slowed down to kill inflation. And now they're trying to hit that target, 2% without knocking themselves off. Global growth is expected to slow this year. I hope it's not going to spiral down. That did nothing. That did nothing. Because I wasn't able to swift enough out the way and so the economy came to a stop. It is also the year of elections. Political candidates charting their collision course for victory hoping to knock rivals off the stage. AI is like a curling stone. Heavy and once set free, it may be difficult to control. And even if all do the right things, well, Accidents can still happen. It's unbelievable. <laughs> the world of curling can teach us much about today's global economy. Having raised interest rates and then still trying to keep things going without coming to a complete stop. And then when all said and done in a competitive environment, you want to knock your competitors to one side, but you don't want to completely ruin the game. Richard Quest, CNN, Davos. 10 second trivia. What year was the latest space mission in which humans successfully landed on the moon? 1959, 1969, 1972, or 1970? If you said 1972, you are correct. That was the last time humans set foot on the moon during the final lunar landing mission in NASA's Apollo program, Apollo 17. Last week, the U.S. launched its first lunar lander mission in more than 50 years. There was no crew on this craft, but the moonshot this time was not successful. Due to a critical fuel leak, the Peregrine spacecraft had to turn back from the vicinity of the moon and head back towards Earth. 
Astrobotic, the company that built the Peregrine lander, under a $108 million contract with NASA said the spacecraft was about 218,000 miles from the Earth. Uh, there were options to crash land the Peregrine on the moon or leave it to the cosmos, but Astrobotic decided that the safest option would be to turn the spacecraft back and allow it to smash into the thick atmosphere of the Earth at high speeds. If the Peregrine's mission had been successful, it might have become the first U.S. spacecraft to land on the moon since Apollo 17. All right, we possibly have some good news for air travelers. The airline industry is set to have its first, quote, normal year since the pandemic. Airfare is at a 15-year low, and more passengers are now ditching the economy seats and up to more premium seating arrangements, did you know? CNN has been speaking with a travel expert who's giving predictions on what's next for airlines and passengers. If I had to pick one word to describe travel in 2024, I'm going to have to say normal. After years of pandemic-related disruptions, 2024 is set to be the first full year of relative normalcy for air travel since the end of the pandemic was declared last year. So we asked travel expert Katie Nastro to share her crystal ball with us. Airfare is 12% lower than it was a year ago. It's almost 25% lower than it was in 2019. Airfare hasn't been this cheap since 2009. While inflation might have consumers worried about price increases at the grocery store, Nastro doesn't expect airfare to skyrocket like it has in recent, more volatile years when the pandemic made travel unpredictable. Without these sort of spikes that we saw over the last two years, we're likely to see 2024 mirror those years in 2019, 2018. Cheap flights are so available and the amount of people looking and wanting to travel is not going to go down, it's likely to go up. Of course, not all airlines survived the pandemic. And some airlines, amidst continuing financial struggles, proposed mergers last year to make their businesses more competitive, they claim. But Nastro warns the opposite could be true for travelers. The single biggest factor for why we see cheap flights is competition. So even if you never fly on a budget carrier like a Spirit, we want those carriers in the mix because it actually places downward pressure on the legacy carriers like a Delta, an American, and United. And so basically when we hear of mergers between airlines, that's the first thing that comes to mind, less competition, and that means less availability of cheap flights for consumers. Today's story getting a 10 out of 10 is proof that some ambitious travel plans don't even need a plane ticket. Brianna DeSanctis, a hiker from New England, has decided to hike the entire United States. Her goal is to be the first woman to complete the American Discovery Trail. It spans more than 6,800 miles of hiking and biking routes. On her journey, Brianna said she encountered wild animals. She hiked through a temperature drop at one point where it went from 22 degrees to just two degrees in a 40 minute minute time span. She said people don't really get outside that much these days, so she's determined to push herself in hopes of inspiring others. I hope some of you out there are finding a path that might inspire others along the way. Remember, you never know when or how or for whom, but you will be the light that someone needs someday. So shine bright, baby. It's shout out time now. Thanks to all of you who've subscribed on our CNN 10 YouTube channel. We're creeping up on a million subscribers, and that's when I'll have to do a challenge set forth by one of you. Dunk tank, polar plunge in the lake, <laughs> what'll it be? All right, this shout out goes to Blackman Road Middle School in Columbus, Georgia. Rise up, keep flying high, Eagles. And this shout out goes to Flasher High School in the city of Flasher, North Dakota. We see you, Bulldogs. See you tomorrow, lovely people. I'm Coy Wire, and we are CNN 10.